All right, so now I'm going to show you how to apply the circles, isometric circles, also very similar to an ellipse, to activity 2.1's number seven. Now, number seven is fairly simple to do, and you'll see how I've already started to make a box around the object just to make it nice and easy for me to count the grid lines and make sure that uh, I'm applying the same kind of concepts with tangent points and uh, connecting the corners, the two-third lines or two-third marks uh, to my paper as they've done relatively well on this example. Now, there's some pretty major mistakes that I think that they've made in this activity, but I am going to try and fix some of those mistakes in my sketch that I show you. All the same basic rules apply. Let's get some things set up. And you'll see that I've already laid out the box. That's my first step with the construction lines. Make sure that that box is uh, well thought out and that you have considered the uh, width directions as well as considered the height and depth directions. Get some adjustment here. <clears throat> Now for this object, it's fairly easy for me to notice that the diameter of the circle on the top is four units and the hole in the middle is two. They share the same center point right here, but they don't share the same tangent points. You'll also find that in the uh, sketch that they provide, they don't quite touch tangent here and they go a little past the tangent point here. Uh, they've got some flat spots and some straight lines, but all in all, it looks fairly good. Down here, I'm going to show you how to finagle this a little bit to make it work for you. And then over here, you'll notice that they come to a point, and we want to try and avoid that. We want to make sure that it's a nice, gentle curve up toward the vertical line. Total width of 11, total height of 4. Uh, it's going to be split in half vertically, and we're going to have a total depth of four as well. I'm going to start with the top up here. And from this corner, I'm going to count forward one, two, three, four toward the right. Place a point, and then I'll go back in depth. One, two, three, four, and I'll use that to make my top square. Okay, so now what I can tell is that this is where the big circle is going to be on the top, and this is the center. My little hole is going to be right in here, but I'll come back and add that towards the end before I do some tonal shading. And I can see that that cylinder is going to go down this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and grid that off a little bit, dropping straight down from this point right here. I'm going to drop down to here, the straight line. And I'm going to go ahead and continue boxing off the rest of this. I know that there's a separation of two units between the base down here on the bottom, and this cylindrical part that goes up. You can see that here, only two, and then another two to get to the top, a total of four. So right along this spot, two units up, all the way over to here, I'm going to make a nice straight line. Construction, of course. All right, fairly close, fairly close. I'll do the same thing for this depth. I'm 
And I'm not going to worry just yet about this one. I will put it in. And although that goes a little bit against what I've said in the past about drawing um, lines that we see through the box, it will help us uh, with identifying that back plane. I'm going to come back to this intersection here and draw a line in depth. One, two, three, four to here. And I should find that that is directly below this corner when I end and by two units. I'll come back up. Now I'll revisit this line. Notice how it's only going to come to here. Later, I'll show you that it goes a little bit further when we delineate y. I'll explain that when we get there. All right, so I have the basic outline of this object. Not too hard to do. Take a moment, pause the video, make sure that you see what I've done. Go back, look it over again if you need to. All right, there's my center. So following my next step of connecting the corners, since I have already made the box and figured out where the cylinders are going to be and identified where my tangent points are, I'm going to make these lines that connect the corners together. Again, steps two and three, eh, you know, if you want to interchange them, it's fine. As long as in the end, you know where to make your marks. Step four, I'm going to uh, make those two third marks. Roughly here, 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 and here. Connect them together with curved lines. To the opposite side. And it doesn't matter if you start with the smaller radius or the bigger one, whichever is better for you. Try to avoid what I call Stewie's head, which is where you wind up with a sharp point at the end of your lips. usually happens because you're drawing too straight of a line and you come to a point instead of continuing the arc through that two-third mark. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It makes for a fairly nice elliptical shape or isometric circle. Now the trick here is that it's a cylinder and I need to be able to show that cylinder drop down. Now, it really works best if I have a second circle just like this one, two units down, because that's the height of this cylinder before it turns into the base part of this object. So if I come down two units where I have this line and this one already drawn in, then I can think about the fact that on the left side of this object, which I can't really see, there would be a line here. I'm going to go real, real light with this one. And there would be a line here. I don't need all of it. I just need to know where tangent marks would be for that square. Now, this can get confusing because I'm now no longer thinking about this top circle and I'm inside the box looking at this plane right here, this square. Take a minute, pause the video, think about that for a second. It's getting ready to be a lot of lines. Connect my corners. I'll make my two-third mark here, here, roughly here, and I'm not going to make this one back here because I won't 
see it. It just will not exist. I won't see it through the, the cylinder, so I don't draw it. In fact, a good bit of this and this, I'll wind up erasing or never really delineating. All I really need is to connect here. But just to make sure I make a nice curve, connect it on through to this tangent point just gently, very lightly. Do the same thing over here, trying to make the same basic arc. Trying to make sure that where that two third mark is, is pretty much right below this two third mark. And same thing over here. Touch tangent. Bring it back out to this side. Now, what's very significant is that not only will I not see this part, physically would not be there because I can't see through the cylinder, but this part I won't see either and will wind up erasing because the base has a cylindrical component to it back here. So this disappears as this line comes to this point and continues along, much like this. It comes in from here and stops right there. Now the rest of this goes fairly quick. Vertical line, vertical line, This vertical line, however, can go on down to the bottom. And if you think about it, if I were to draw a diagonal line from here, it would hit that two-third mark right about there. Now I'm going to move over to this side. And I'm going to focus on making my circles for the top and bottom. And really, they're arcs because I never finish off the circle. However, if I think about it as being a square that has a center point, this is my tangent, tangent, and tangent. I have another tangent back here, but I'll never make that arc. Connect together my corners. Two-thirds, 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 and two-thirds. Draw in my arc. Do the same thing on the bottom down here. One, two, three, four. And I already have this vertical line connecting those corners that would be here. Two thirds, two thirds, and two thirds. Tangent, tangent, connect. really this part that I want and this one. Connect together a vertical line. And over here, come out two points. Connect that together with a gentle arc. Short of my circle in the middle up here, I'm done. And of course, delineating and tonal shading. This sets up the construction lines for what I need for this object.